In this video, we're going to learn how to create the Shopify app using Laravel in 10 minutes or maybe less. Stay tuned for that. Before we start this video, this video is sponsored by Weekly How. That's right, I sponsor my own channel. <laughs> Starting today until the 14th day of February, my course will be available for only $14.99. That's why I highly encourage you to enroll now while you can because I honestly have something to update to all of my course. So if you're interested, enroll now and I'll see you in one of my courses. All right, so for this video, we're going to create a Shopify app using Laravel in 10 minutes or maybe less. But before we start, if you're going to follow along, make sure that you have the following installed in your computer. Make sure that you have SAMP, Angrok, and of course, Composer. Now, if you think that you're ready to start, let's go to the computer and start working. All right, so before we start, make sure that you have your SAMP control panel open as well as your Shopify Partners account open. And also I have in here my stopwatch. So without further ado, time starts now. All right, let's open VS Code and let's use Composer and then React, not React, but create project Laravel slash Laravel. And then I'll be creating the files here in this folder itself. So I'll just use that symbol, press enter. Now this is going to take a while, so let's just go out for a walk and come back. All right, so it's almost done. While we're waiting for that, let's open the env file and set up our environment variables. So here we have the app URL. We can start our ngrok. So here in our new terminal, I'll use ngrok HTTP 8000. Press enter. Let's just copy the secured URL and paste it in here. And then I'm going to set up the database. So here we have the database database. Let's change the Laravel to um, uh, Dmithic, if you know what I mean. No, never mind. Let's just use Shopify app DB. Let's save that. Let's open our browser. And then let's create a new app and then create a new app. And then select public app and then we'll call this Laravel app. And just paste the um, URL there. And for the redirection URL, paste that as well. And we'll add authenticate. Authenticate. There you go. Click create app. Let's just wait for it to finish. There you go. And then what we're going to do next, we're going to copy the API keys. But before we do that, let's just go back to the um, composer. Hopefully it's finished. Not yet. And what we're going to do while we're waiting for that, let's open the config. It's not yet, honestly, because we still have to um, use the command composer require. All right, so it's done. Let's use the um, composer, composer require, and then it should be oc set slash Laravel hyphen Shopify. Press enter. And while we're waiting for that, let's open the routes folder and it should be the web.php. And here we're going to set up the uh, middleware. So here just add the middleware middleware and then we'll set this to um, it should be brackets first and then single quotation mark and should be auth.shopify and then after that we're going to set its name to um its name to um home let's save that and that's because the reason why we're doing this what the was that um because the package that we're using here is expecting the um router home so it's important to set the um the router to uh, to this home and it will display the welcome view after that, we're going to use the composer and then should be um, not composer, PHP artisan vendor and then colon publish. And then we're going to set its tag to um, Shopify config. Press enter and it should create the config file. So let's just open that, open. And here we're going to set the following config files. So first, let's set the um, name to um, Laravel app it should be the same with the name that you used in your in your settings so app setup laravel app should be laravel app there you go next is the shopify api version should be 2021 and then here shopify api key let's copy the api key here copy that paste it in here next the api secret copy the secret key paste it here let's save that and if you want to customize your api scopes just customize this all right, so let's continue. What else do we need? Let's save that. Let's open the web.php. We don't need that anymore. ENV, we don't need that anymore. And next is the um, app and then models and then the user.php. And here we're going to use 
the um, OC set, and then the Shopify, Shopify app, and then contracts, and then shop model as I shop model. And with semicolon and next is the um, OC set as well, and then Shopify app, and should be traits, and then shop model. And that with semicolon, and here we're going to um, implement the iShop model. So implements iShop model. And then underneath of our class, inside of our class, we're going to use the shop model. Shop model. There we go. Hit save. And then next, we're going to open our resources, our views folder, and it should be the welcome.blade. Let's get rid of all of this. And we're going to use, we're going to extend this and use the layout. So it should be, should be a Shopify app and then layouts default with semicolon. And here we're going to create a section and not that seriously. And then end section and section. And inside of this, we're going to create a paragraph tag. And I think it should be content. There we go. Come on, hurry up. And then here, welcome. And we can just use the um, auth. And it should be the shop. I think, no, user. User. And then we're going to get the name. And then next is the um, script. So section should be script. And then we're going to use and section. And it should be singular, uh, no, plural. And here, we're going to use the parent. And then here, we're going to use the script. And inside of this, we're going to create the following variables. So var app bridge is equal to window and then app bridge. And with semicolon, I have something to copy. Don't worry about that. So actions app bridge. I'm prepared. Don't worry. <laughs> Dot actions. And then still have three minutes. Um, var title var actions dot title var and then we can just use var button again actions button and then var redirect it's equal to actions redirect and lastly i think it's the var or title title var options it's going to be an object and inside of this we're going to set the title to um Welcome. And then here we're going to um, create the title. So my title bar is equal to title bar, title bar, and create function and pass the app and then the title bar option, title bar options. And that with semicolon. And then I think the, the last thing that we need to do is to um, create the database. So here we can just use PHP artisan vendor, then publish. And we're going to use the tag and set this to um, shop, Shopify migrate, migrations. And then we're going to use PHP artisan migrate. All right, so we got an error. So Shopify is not set yet. Let's open our local host. We still have one minute. I think we're going to be, we're going to be okay. And create a new database. Come on. Bruh. We'll call the Shopify app DV. Click create. Let's open our VS code. Run the um, command again. There you go. It's working. There you go. Now let's PHP artisan serve. All right. Let's open our app setup. Let's um, install this to a development store. We still have 30 seconds. <laughs> Select the example development store. Yes! <laughs> Come on, install a listed app. Two seconds. Ah! What? Why? What's the error? What is the error? 302. It was okay. Now, what is the problem? Let's open the store. I mean, I missed already the times. I mean, at least we were able to install the app, so that's a good news. I think we can just continue this. It's nothing to worry about. Let's open the apps page. And there you go. We have here the Laravel app. Let's open that. And there we go. Now we have the example development store of Shopify.com. I don't know why we got an error in here for some reason. It didn't redirect us to the app page. That's bizarre. But anyway, here we have, we have our Shopify app. 
you know what, let's continue this and set up the um, CSS. So I'll just create a new file here in our public folder, create a new folder, and I'm going to call this CSS. And inside of this, I'm going to create a new file, and should be app.css. And then in our welcome.blade, I'm going to create a new HTML. So I think I'll just push it down. And I'm going to create an HTML skeleton. And inside of the body, you know what? I'll just move this inside of the body tag. There you go. And then underneath of this, I'm going to create the main tag. Main. And inside of this, I'm going to create the section. And then inside of this, I'm going to create the div. I'll give it a class of card. And then inside of this, I'm going to create a PHP tag. And then I'm going to create the um, shop. And I'll be using the auth and user. So I can use the API. And then I'll create a new products variable. And I'll be using the shop. And then I'll be using the API. And then I'll be using rest. And here I'll be using the get method and I'll be passing the um, API endpoint. So admin slash API slash 2021-01 slash products.json. And then here I'll be creating a bracket and I'll be using limits. Then I'll be using the same variables. And then I'm going to select hmm, JSON decode do i need to decode this i don't think so this is different now products and then it should be inside a body and then it should be container and then products and with semicolon and we're going to use echo statement and print our function to display whatever's inside of that variable so products and with semicolon hit save let's open the app refresh and then I'm going to open the uptown CSS and copy the CSS file then I'll go back to the uh, download CSS I'm going to copy the CSS style sheet go back to VS code open the app CSS paste that below or inside and then I can just open our app and there you go I have the following products awesome it's working so hit refresh again should be inside the card this time it's not for some reason. Oh, the reason for that is because we are not using the file yet. So here in our welcome blade, I'm going to use the link and I'll give it a class of style sheet. And then I'll be referencing the file using the asset. And then I'll be using the app. No, CSS folder and then app.css. Hit save. Let's open our app. Hit refresh. There we go. Now we have our card. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is just to create the table for this product. So let's go back to VS Code. And here after the echo or echo print R, we're going to create a for loop. So for each products as product, I am going to create a table. So instead of this card, I'll be creating the table. And instead of this table, I'll be creating table head and instead of this table head I'll be creating the table row and I'll be using the th and let me just honestly duplicate this and then for the first table head I'll just use product and then for the second I'll use action and then I'll add in here a call span call span and give it a value of two and next for the t body I'll just create a t body here and inside, I am going to create the for loop. So I'll just move this PHP tag inside of the tbody tag, like so. And inside of this, I am going to create the table rows. So let's create a table row. And inside of this, I'm going to create three TH or no, it should be table data. So you know what? Let me just redo it again. And then I'll just duplicate all of this three times. And the first is the image. I'll just create image tag here. And then here I'll just use echo statement and use the product variable and get the title. So it should be title titile <laughs> and that. And then 
for the uh, third table data, I'm going to create an anchor tag and give it a class of, I think that is secondary, secondary, and then icon um, trash. And let me just save this. Let's open our app, hit refresh. Let's just scroll down for a bit. And there you go, now we have the following table. I'm wondering why it's not limiting my products. Let's go back to VS Code. Limits should be limit, not limits. Hit save, and we don't need the echo or echo statement. It's already working. Hit save, hit refresh. And there you go, now we have the following products, and we can just add in here the image. So first, we need to check if there are images. So let me just create a new variable here. This is the same. Um, I, I'm doing the same thing in the previous video, you know, the um, how to create, how to design Shopify apps without Polaris. So basically, I'll just create the variable image and I'm going to check if the product variable and then the um, images, images, if the count, I forgot about that. So count function, I'm going to check if the value or the, um, yeah, the count is greater than zero. If it is, then I'm going to pass the value of product images, the first image, and I'll pass the SRC in our image variable. And then I'm going to echo out the string. So it should be image, and then end up with semicolon. And for the alt, we can do the same thing, PHP, but instead of image, we're going to use the product title. So title, close that with semicolon and hit save let's open our app hit refresh and all right so the image is really big so we can just resize that by adding a width attribute here set it to 20 and the height let's set it to um 20. hit save let's open our app hit refresh and there you have it now we have created a shopify app in less than 10 minutes i think I mean, I think we made it. We, uh, we were able to create or install a Shopify app in our development store. I think the only reason why we took a lot of time is because we used API and then we designed our Shopify app using Uptown CSS. But other than that, we have successfully created a Shopify app and installed it in our development store. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, subscribe now. And let me know in the comments below what you want to see next. And again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.